Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman, and a number of years ago I did a video called How to Really Use Microsoft Word, specifically talking about tabs and indents. I have got a lot of people comment on this video over the years, and I recently received an email from a very nice pastor who was putting together some kind of a, a quiz for their congregation and was having some frustration. And just like a resume, which I used in this previous example, this is a document that I think we can fix, and they offered uh, this document up to us to fix together. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and just bring that document up into Microsoft Word, and we're going to fix it and uh, teach this uh, pastor and ourselves how to better use Microsoft Word. They had expressed a couple of issues and a couple of concerns with this uh, document, and we're going to try to fix this together. They've highlighted some questions and some issues. And the first thing that I'm going to do when I receive a new document like this, and I want to fix it, is I'm going to go here, I'm going to turn on paragraph marks, okay? This button right here, this paragraph mark guy, lets you see the hidden marks within Word, okay? Show and hide paragraph marks. You can also press control asterisk. See, when I turn that on and off, I'm just going to click that back and forth. A number of formatting things appear. We can see where our friend had pressed space. I can see where they pressed tab and then pressed another space. So you can see here they pressed space. It looks like they pressed the underline, uh, which is shift hyphen a number of times, and then pressed space again. We can see that they had some concerns where they mentioned that that next underline is more bold, is a little thicker, and that was confusing. You can see that they typed in lesson one, pressed space three times, and then pressed a tab in order to get this to appear off to the side. And then for some reason, another tab right here. These are all very common things that people do. They'll come in and they'll go tap space, 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 and they'll say, that looks kind of right. And this is common because Word is not super intuitive. It looks like they were attempting to make some kind of a two column quiz here where you're supposed to match the two sides, uh, but it expressed some concerns that that didn't look right and that maybe it didn't look vertically balanced. You can see the farther that they get here, the less things line up. In fact, if I bring over a, a screen ruler, you'll notice by the time they get down here to burning bush, that does not line up at all with the bottom right here, but it mostly lines up within a pixel or two up here. So we're going to fix that as well. All right. Then a little bit later, we get into this nested bullets. Okay, this is real common here. We've got some nested, we've got A and then A1 and then A1A. And then we'll see that in some instances, things line up like this. But if we type some more, does that line up the way we want it vertically? And I think that the individual had called out a particular place where it did not line up the way that they wanted. Let's see if we can find that one. That was in a revised document, which is right here. There we go. So look at this. Suppose this line is longer. So then they've got it wrapping here. I think we've all experienced those things and we joke about how you make a change in word and then in the in the in the background it's the sound of sirens because you don't know what has been broken somewhere else you can affect your entire document okay so we're here on the home uh the home tab the home ribbon and we're turning that on so the first thing we want to do is show our formatting let's fix the top first okay all right so if i click anywhere, as I am moving around within my document, I want you to look over here. I want you to look over here. I'm going to click around and notice that things change as I make those clicks. So right now I'm clicked in the word review right here. You'll notice that bold is now clicked. But if I click on the word match, the B, the bold button is not clicked anymore. Okay. If I click right here on this extra thick underline next to red C. Okay, what happens? The underline shows up, but if I click here next to tabernacle, it is not. So right off the bat, I can see that these spaces are underlined. And I see that as I move around, as you click, 
these formatting buttons reflect the state of where the cursor currently is. So that underline button is pressed, is depressed, because here where we see red C and then an underline, there's an underline there. But how do you explain that? Because here we see where it says Mount Sinai, we have an underline or what appears to be an underline, that button is not pressed. That is because our friend used shift hyphen and pressed underline. They created underlines and then selected them, whether they be inadvertently or vertently, and then pressed underline. So what you're actually looking at here, and I'm going to zoom way in on that, is a bunch of underlines that you pressed and then the underline formatting that appeared on top of that. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to go ahead and just hit Control Z. I'm going to select this, press Control U, and I'm un-underlining these things. Okay, so now that now looks consistent. Here's the question, though. What's the correct thing to do? Should you press one, two, three underlines? One, two, three underlines. Or press space a bunch of times, then select those spaces, and then hit Control U to underline them. Pressing space a bunch of times, and then underlining those spaces. That's one way to do it. Another option is to press tab, which might be intuitive, but in this case, because it's the first tab within our bulleted nested list, it is added there. I could uh, do a number of things here. Adding a tab at that point could be a little bit problematic, a little bit confusing. I personally don't see anything wrong with those underlined characters as long as they are the same font size and they are consistent. So what I would suggest you do is you leave it the way you've got it here. But then we have to ask ourselves, what is the correct way to add white space? The correct way is whatever way gives you the precision that you wanted and is consistent. So in this case, this Mount Sinai font is Times New Roman 12. And we can see that it is consistently, as I'm clicking from place to place, Times New Roman 12 everywhere. This, however, on the left is Book Antigua. So our bullets are formatted differently than our text. That is going to cause some inconsistency because over here on these A, where it says A and Lamb, that is Times New Roman 12. While this over here is Book Antigua. I can click on it and see. That's adding an extra pixel or two as we move down. So that's what's happening. And by the time we get down here, that different font on the bullet on the left here, these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 through 10, that has added that a little additional space. So we've got an issue there. Uh, as well, I don't know if these are truly bullets, meaning that they have literally been made like that, or if you just typed a period. My guess is this is a formatted as a bullet uh, list, while this is simply typing A and typing B and typing C. So you can see how things might be a little hairy and be a little bit frustrating after a while. So there's a couple of ways to fix that. First, we can look at these bullets here and format those bullets in the correct font, which is Times New Roman, not, uh, in this case, Book Antigua. So I'm going to select that bulleted list. I can select it in one of two ways. I could select it with my selector, or I can just come out, see how the, the cursor is facing, um, in this case, to the left, and that's to the right. So that's left, and that's right. If you come out to the left, you can select by clicking outside the margin, and I'm selecting that entire, entire row right there. And then we've got our numbering library, what I call bullets. We can define that format. We can set how that's going to be formatted. So I'm going to right click, okay, and I could go and adjust those things from there as well. All right. So what we can do is we could say, see our line spacing, see our bullets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, define a new format, check the font, 
and I'm going to say times New Roman 12, which is what we're trying to do consistently. Now watch this. I'm going to hit OK, but I want you to watch right here. We're going to see if those are going to change. Okay, subtle. See the difference between that one and that one? Look at the three. I want you to do that. I'm just hitting Control Z and Control Y. So I'm undoing it and I'm redoing it. Now watch how everything pops up. See that? So what we did is we defined a number format, in this case here, that had the font that we wanted, and we made sure that that font was the same as the text on the right. And in doing that, we have that number format consistent. Now, it doesn't really matter that this is not officially, officially a, um, or explicitly would be a better way of phrasing it, a, a bulleted list, but we could certainly try that. If we did that, though, we might see that everything gets goofy. See how it got confused now? Now we've added a, uh, a number 11 here. That's because these two columns, I don't think, are really columns. Yeah, see that? Things are getting a little wacky. So I'm going to reset this a little bit. We're going to take this section break here. We're going to delete that. Get that section break rid of there. Put everything. Now see everything just went into one crazy, one crazy column there. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go over here to layouts, columns. I'm going to switch it from one column to two columns. And then right after number 10, we're going to go and we're going to do an insert of a column break. Okay. And in doing that, we've put everything on the one side off to the next side. And then we're going to need to think about where those columns start and finish. And that's where you see up here the first column and the second column. It's a little subtle in dark mode. I could probably change it to light mode to show you. You can switch over here to options, change our display. I think it's into... I like to say in dark mode, but you might not like that. So I'm trying to remember where that was. Actually, you know where it is. It's over here in account on office theme. Okay. So you see this white area here, and then there's the gray area, and then it starts white again. That's the column on the left, and then the column on the right. All right. So I can adjust those. I can come over here and I can adjust where that column is and how much space appears. I'm dragging the space between those columns and whether or not they're going to have a lot of space or not a lot of space. The problem with columns in this context is you notice as I'm changing the space, it really desperately wants those columns to be uh, even. But in this example, I'm going to go ahead and control Z our way back the way you had it before. Your column over here on the left and the one on the right has a different size. Word doesn't like columns to be different. It likes them to be the same. So you can go and in, go into column setting and manually change the width. So what you had was actually quite clever. You had made multiple columns and then manually set the width, which is smart. So I would keep it the way you did because the way I did by default gives you an equal column width. So the challenge that you had that originally had those, uh, those two bullets be different was that the formatting for the numbering scheme was separate from the formatting for the text. Now if we go and compare that with our ruler tool, we can see that those are now lined up pixel perfect. Isn't that nice? So problem solved there. I do want to call out though tab stops and where our tabs decide to stop if they're not explicitly set. This right here is set up currently as a hanging paragraph indent. So when you hit tab, by default you're just going to end up here. 
unless you put in a tab of your own, an explicit tab. I don't think that's necessary for what we're doing right here. This looks pretty good right now, and uh, I would keep it the way it is. But now we've solved that issue, and we can turn off. See that? Turn that off and see it looks nice and lined up. However, tab stops would have value up here because instead of saying lesson one and then a bunch of spaces, I'm just going to put a tab in there. Now I'm going to click once, click once up here. Watch this. You had space, space, space. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tab. It's going to get wacky. That's fine. And I can do one of two things. I can click anywhere. Like, let's say I'll click on this number one in the ruler and the tab appears. And you see how that tab looks like a little L, a little left tab. I can drag it around, see? And that allows me to decide where that goes. Or I can pick it up. You can actually pick up by dragging. I'm clicking. I'm holding the left mouse. I'm going to drag it away and I'm going to let go. Now I've drug away or I've deleted that, that tab. So I've got a tab there, and then let's go over here. And this Genesis Deuteronomy, I don't want that to be um, a left tab. I want it to be a right tab, which you had. But I don't think you drug it all the way to the edge. And then you added an extra tab. So I'm going to delete that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to delete that. So now we've got a left tab here, and then this tab right here is associated with this right tab. So watch, if I grab that right tab, see that? A right tab just means right aligned. Right tabs are great. Right tabs are like the most powerful part of Word that nobody knows about. It looks like a little arrow like that because whatever you type is going to be right aligned against that. You see? This is a test. Isn't that cool? I'm going to control Z my way back. So you can pick that up and put it wherever you want it. All right, so now we fix the top right there. And if we don't like this spacing here, Rather than doing the spacing with spaces, we can just move the tab. Totally up to you. Okay? So we've got our vertical space here. Things are looking good. Am I suspicious of this one doing the same thing? I am. Let's bring our ruler back over. Yep. So I can prove that by clicking once. You can see now that this text here is Times New Roman, but I'll bet you... Yep, all of our formatting. See how it selected everything and marked it as gray? All of our formatting for all of our bullets are wrong. Now watch, by double clicking on them, we can change them all for the entire application there. We'll just select our recently used number format. See that? And you watch how everything, look at the one down here by Exodus or the one over there by the book of Leviticus, I can click that and look, it just changed the entire application. I can see it again. There's another one. Let's go and select it. But I notice here this one's bold. We're going to fix that, turn that off. Cool. So now, see? <clears throat> nice and clean. Let me actually prove that with our ruler. Nice and clean. Okay, cool. Last one down here. Let's spend a little time down here because this one's interesting. So if we click here on this two, you have the two, you hit tab, and then it looks like you pressed one, two, three times the underline key. Then you moved into a numbered list. However, down here, I want you to watch this right here, okay? You see, this here is the second 
line in a paragraph. This right here, this little mark here is your first line indent. And that is called your hanging indent, which means that anything that is the next item in the paragraph is going to end up there. So what you're saying is that you want the next line in your hanging indent to be here. However, you're also wanting your kind of like your checkbox area or your quiz area to appear differently as well. But you'll notice that the hanging indent in the left tab are coming along with each other. As you're moving the hanging indent, your left tab moved as well. So you need to think about those as being separate items. Okay. So we're going to reverse these. I'm going to move the left tab over here. I'm going to move the hanging indent over here. So now they line up. And what we can do is we can do that for the entire section if you want. Okay. Um, you see how these are kind of grayed out? You see how they right here. These are like, this is definitive. This is the first indent. That's the hanging indent. So those are the same. But if we select them, okay, we're going to select all three of these, one, two, and three. So I've selected the entire thing. You see how these are now kind of gray? That's saying, well, the settings are kind of different, so I'm just going to kind of ghost out because I haven't decided what's going on here. What we're going to do is tap them one time. Watch that bottom part there. Watch down to number three. I'm going to just click that. See how it, it's like, oh, hang on. You're making changes that are affecting us all. And now suddenly everything's all goofy. Okay. We've made it definitive. We've made the formatting now for all of these selected things definitive. So that's kind of confusing, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to click one, two, and then three. So what we're going to do is we're going to change just those first items in the list now. Click. Okay, I can drag it as well. And then click. You see? So now I can adjust these. So let's put our one over here. We'll move our hanging indent to be about yay. And then I'm going to click and watch how this guy here, this L, is kind of grayish. I'm going to click it once. Now it turned dark. Okay. So now what we have is that first indent right there, the tab, and then our next line, which we just want to be consistent. Now you have a space there, that's fine. The same thing applies to these guys. So I'm just going to hold down control, holding down control with my one finger while I'm selecting the others. And I can also make similar adjustments. You see how we're adjusting all the lines because those happen to be the lines that I'm currently selected. Okay. So then how do you get this here? aligned with that. Well, the problem is that you used space for your white space. So you have to decide what your white space is going to be. Spaces are usually not very consistent and they're never going to be uh, perfect in that they're never going to have the, uh, the right, oops, they're never going to have uh, like a measurement, like it's at 1.5 inches. It's always going to be the size of the font. So you would need to press tab and then have another tab stop that controls exactly where things got lined up. So instead of using a space, we'd use a tab stop. And then we need that tab stop to be the same for every single item in the number there. So we would want it to be like this. See, I'm just dragging that tab stop around. And then instead of a space, we're going to use a tab. Okay, I'm selecting those. 
and then I'm going to just confirm that that tab stop is where you want it to be. You don't have a lot of choices right now because the tab stop is going to either be explicit by this left tab or it's going to just be whatever that hanging indent happens to be. So if you want the tab stop to be the same as the hanging indent, you can just leave that there. But I kind of like it to be that way. So here we've got our first line. We've got a tab here. We've got a tab there. And then this is whatever the next line is, which in this case would be end. Now, if you don't want those like that, you would make them the same. So select those. We'll line those up next to each other. See how that end of a sentence is now lined up with the which? And then we'll put that back there. All right. Now I turn off the paragraph marks. We have a pretty clean, this looks like this bold, this one here is bolded. Let's just turn that off. Here we've got those underlines, those extra underlines again. So I'm just going to select all of that and just control U, turn off the underlines. And then here, one, two, three, let's find out what you did. So we're going to zoom back out again. I'm just using my zoom it tool. So let's see if any of those are underlined. They are not. Now this is interesting. What did you do here? Ah, look at the B in bold way up there in the corner. Okay. If I'm on line one, it's bold and here it's not bold. So it turns out what you did is you typed one, two, three underlines, and notice that the thickness of those underlines is affected by being either bold or not, or underlined underlines or not. That gives you two of them, that gives you bold. It's up to you. You can make a bunch of spaces, and then you can underline the spaces. You can literally type the underlined character which itself could then be bold or not bold. So you see right there, this one's not, and that one is. All of those things, again, it's just a Word document. It doesn't matter, it's okay. But as long as it's consistent, it's gonna give you the look and the style that you are gonna appreciate. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn off your, your background color there. It looks like you had some background fonts there, and maybe a highlight. What were you doing here? Ah, here's your highlight. So I'm going to select that and then I'll turn it off. And now we've got a nice clean document that looks the way that you want. Again, remember that you can make these changes any way that you want to by defining styles. See that book Antigua snuck in again there. Look at that. We can change that to one of our existing number formats. But you don't want to use numbers here. You maybe want to use like an A or another one. So how are we going to change that font? I would change it to this one and then come back and then change the list level to an A. This is a con this is an interesting one. Let's look at this. I'm confused now. Look at that. So I just learned something. So in this case here, we've got our bulleted format of one, which we defined here. That also, that definition shows not just formatting, but also uh, whether it starts with one and it's one in a period or it's one in a parentheses or it's one in a whatever. But this one down here, okay, that format can be changed if I select it once. Now everything turned gray. I'm going to change it from Book Antigua to Times New Roman. It changed it for everything, which is nice. Okay. And then that indent there has these alignments and where they are indented. We can select those and then set them for all the different levels. 
you can get into this dialog box, which is super interesting. Is it aligned to the left? Is it a bunch of A's? Which level are we? Is this level two? Is this level three? Does the a changes apply to the entire list or not? And then whether or not these things restart. And you can tell when you click, see how it turned gray? There's the format of the letter, and then there's this white space here. That white space appearing within that list level. There's your format of the number. And then here, I'm going to go back into that list indentation, figure out where that white space is. And I think it is. No. I haven't been in here in a long, long time. What I'm looking for is this gray box here. I think it is that guy. Look at that. Isn't that interesting? So we fixed that manually. Can I make it work for all future ones? See, I'm selecting. I've grabbed that guy there. All right. So if I hit enter, yes, I'm getting the same. There you go. So that extra gray text here is this white space, not see the tab. That's what it is. It's because of the tab. Yep. So I click there and I've got that hanging indent right there. Good. I learned something there. Isn't that interesting, my friends? So now we have, yep, see that? That's one, that's one, that's one. We want this to be the same as well. Now I've got Times New Roman, Times New Roman, Times New Roman all the way up. Yeah, look at that. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Learn something every day. Cool. So friends, oh, this is actually worth pointing out as well. You might notice as I zoom in and out, I'm using the, the zoom here. I'm holding down control and I'm zooming. Sometimes you might notice these lines can disappear. See how they're fading away for a second there? That's not really that they're disappearing. It's just how those lines are being drawn or rendered on the screen. Okay, so you can confirm that at different zoom levels. You see here, I can hit zoom 100. But if I pick myself up, and I'll show you down here. See this zoom? You can actually grab that, that zoom and drag it around right here. That's the same thing as what I'm doing with control scroll. I'm a big fan of zooming around. It makes you feel more like you can visualize what's going on there. I'm just going, yeah, that looks good. Zoom in, zoom at the width of the page, zoom at 100%. Okay. So I'm looking at this. I might add a little space there. This is another philosophical argument. Some people might think that that additional enter is sloppy. Okay, what they might want to do instead is add to one of these headings here, whatever heading style that this currently is. And they might say, I want that to be heading two style. And then doing that, add a little bit of space. We'll maybe go over that. Maybe I'll use this document and clean up a little bit later because you notice here we've got lesson two with a tab. And then we've got lesson two with a bunch of spaces here. That can be then a tab. But then I have to add this guy here, which is that, um, that left tab. The correct thing to do here is to apply a style, which is bold, this font, these tabs, this underline, and everything, and then reuse it for lesson one, lesson two, and lesson three. And I'm realizing that. In this particular case, that is probably the correct thing to do. But then 
why would you do that? You might want to then go and say, I want to make a new style defined on this. Because this one, lesson one, looks the way we want, right? It's got everything we want. So let's try that, actually. I'll just do it anyway. Create a style. Okay. Lesson header. This is really important. What we're doing is we are creating a new style from the formatting. I'm like, that's the one I want. I like it. Okay. See, it says lesson header, and it's got all the nice underlines there. Now, watch this. We'll go back down here to lesson two. Select it. Call it lesson header. You might say, hey, that failed. That didn't work. Well, no, because we didn't press tab right there. Okay. Now it looks nice. Let's go down here to lesson three. I'm going to actually put in the tab right now in anticipation of this formatting being applied. Right. Select that line right there. Watch. Boom. Click. Nice clean lesson. Isn't that cool? Now, in this case here, we might need that to be on the next page. So we could then say, insert page break. Look at that. See how I'm zooming out? It's kind of intuitive. Just to zoom out a little bit, look at it. So then we look here and we say there's not enough space there. right? We want to have more space above lesson two. What we can do now is we can add more space everywhere for lesson two. We could say modify. We'll select them all while we do it just to see them change. Modify. And then we could say, I want to add some formatting here. I'm going to add some paragraph formatting. And I'm going to say, I want to have 10 points after or before. Let's do before. Do six points before. Watch. I'm going to hit OK. Watch the way it says lesson two. Bloop. And you can tell, this is important, you see how that gray, that six points we just added? They're showing it because it's selected in that gray area. If it was not before that style, but rather after this one, which is another way to do this, we could say after the last bullet add some space, it would have appeared in that gray, not this one. That's a good, a good tip, actually to notice where is the white space. Look at that one, see? Who, who owns that white space? In this case, that's not after lesson two, it's rather before this one, okay? All right, that looks pretty nice. I probably, oh, look at that. Why do we have an extra page here? Uh, look at, just as I think the last, just as I think it's the rest of the video, I find some wonderful new things. I'm going to say view multiple pages, and then we're going to note that we have this random extra page. Why do we have a random extra page? Well, friends, turn on paragraph marks. There's a random page break here, right here. There's a paragraph and then a page break. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. I'm going to delete that. Now, because the cursor is before the paragraph. It's not a backspace. Backspace goes that way. Okay, backspace goes this way. That is a backspace. Backspace moves the cursor this way. It, it goes like that. Okay, I'm going to instead do it this way. That's going to be a delete. So we're going to pull from here. So delete. There you go. How clean is that? Turn off that. Boom. Done. Now these blue squiggles are all just, uh, you know, don't bug me grammar things, but let's not worry about those. Now we've got a nice clean document. I'm going to go and save that and send it to our friend. So for the two of you who've made it all the way to the end here, if you like this kind of stuff, or if you thought I did something wrong and you have a better tip on how to do this kind of work, uh, you'll let me know in the comments. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.